Welcome to this video of the course Answer Set Solving in Practice. My name is Javier Romero and I am going to show you how to do the exercise on normal logic programs of the introduction part of the course. Our task in this exercise is to determine the stable models of these logic programs. Logic program A, which is about raining and getting wet. Logic program P, B, that is about tea and coffee. Logic program C, about wearing different clothes. And logic program D, that is about food. For this, we are going to proceed as follows. First, we are going to review the slides where that are most relevant for this exercise. And actually what I'm going to do there is just to point to you to the slides that are important to the exercise. And if you have not watched the videos where these slides are explained, please go and watch them. I put the link below in the description. Then we are going to do the exercises and first we will apply the definitions in a more naive way and then we will see more advanced ways of solving these exercises so that you can do them quicker. Let's go then to the slides. So this is the slide that is most relevant to this exercise where you have the definition of what is the reduct of the program and what is a stable model, right? So a set X of atoms is a stable model of a program P. If the consequences of the reduct of P with respect to X equals X, right? So this is the main definition that we are going to use. And here it's always also going to be important, this note here, that its atoming X is justified by a proof from the reduct. This is very well explained in the presentation in the video of the slide, so please, if you don't remember what this meant exactly, go and watch it. And then also something, another property that we are going to use is this one that appears here that says that if X is a stable model of a logic program P, then X is a model of a logic program P, right? So we can take the models of P and among them, some will be stable and some not. But there will be never a stable model that is not a model of a program. Now, I think that the definition of a model of a logic program is not made explicit in the slide, so I'm going to write it on the previous slide that we have seen here. Okay, so then we are going to say that a set X of atoms is a model of a program P if for every rule A that belongs to P, the head of the rule belongs to the set whenever the positive body of the rule is contained in the set and the negative body of the rule intersected with the set is empty. So for X being a model of a program, it has to be the case that for every rule, if the elements in the, in the positive body are contained in the set and the elements in the negative body are not in the set, this is what this formula represents, then the head must also be in the head, right? So say it in another way. Um, mm, no, let's let's let me let me backtrack a bit. So we are going to say that the body of the rule is satisfied when these conditions hold. Hmm? Then what we can say is that a set of atoms is a model if for every rule, whenever the body is satisfied, the head belongs to the set. And now if you remember the definition of closeness, actually if P is a positive program, then this condition doesn't matter because it always holds since this set would be this B minus of R would be the empty set. Then the definition becomes exactly the same for P positive. 
And actually, we could say that that uh, that a set X of atoms is closed under a normal program P also uh, under these circumstances. But usually, this closeness definition is not used for these normal logic programs, but you can also think about it that way. Hmm? Okay, so in summary, we have the definition of the reader, the definition of a stable model, also the definition of a model, and we know that each atom in a stable model is justified by a proof from the reduct. And we also had here this property that every stable model is also a model of the program. Good. Then let's move on to the part A of this exercise 1.2. So here we have our program P that says that sprinkler is in the stable model if rain is not in the stable model, rain is in the stable model if a sprinkler is not in the stable model, and we have wet if rain and wet in sprinkler. Let's write here the atoms of this program P that are sprinkle, rain, and wet. And as in the previous exercises, I'm going to use just the initials of the atoms. Now, to find the stable models of this program, in principle, if we apply the definition directly, what we have to do is the following. Consider all possible sets. That is the empty set, the set with R, with, sorry, the set with S, with R, with W, with S and R, with S and W, with R and W, and with S and uh, W. So, actually, I should be writing this properly, like with the calibration, like S, R, W, and with the commas, but to make it um, simpler for you to read and for me to write, I will just write the letters together and we understand that I'm talking about this set of atoms. Right, so here we would have these eight interpretations of the program, and for each of them, I would have to build the reduct and then find the consequences of the reduct. And if the result here coincided with what we started, then we would return that as a, the, the original set as a stable model. Now, what you can see already is that this would be a huge work because we have an uh, in, in the stable model semantic. So for this logic program, we have exponentially many interpretations that we have to check, right? So here we have three atoms, then we have to check two to the power of three um, interpretations. So this is going to be quite some work. But then what can we do? So one idea is to make our life easier. We can take advantage of this property that we have seen before. The stable models are also models of the program, right? So then what we can do is first find the models of the program and then among the models, check whether they are stable using the, the, the definition of a stable model, right? Because we know that the stable models are a subset of the model. So we can first find the models and among those, check which of them are indeed stable models. And this is what we are going to do. So please let me erase all this. Let's move this down because we are still going to, to need this afterwards when we to, to check whether the models are stable. And let's go to here to find the models of this logic program. For this, we can follow the simple approach where we write all interpretations, the NPT set, R, S, W, S with R, S with W, R with W, and S, R, and W together. Now, to find the models of this program, we can go one interpretation after the other, checking whether they are indeed models or not. But we can also try to go in the other direction. So, if we remember the definition of a model, it is the case that an interpretation is not a model if there is some rule 
such that the body is satisfied, but the head does not belong to the set. Then what we can do is go one rule after the other and checking what interpretations are invalidated using those rules. With what interpretations cannot be modeled given those rules. And then at the end, after we have uh, deleted all the interpretations that are not models according to these rule, rules, what will be left will be the models of the program. Let's do this then. So, the first rule basically eliminates the models where we have not rain and not a sprinkler, right? Because if we have not rain, if, so if rain does not belong to the set, then a sprinkler must belong to the set for being a model. So it eliminates the interpretation where rain is not there and a sprinkler is not there. So this is one of them and this is another one and the others. Oh, sorry, this was a mistake. And this is the other. So not rain and not um, sprinkler. And the others, I that have rain or sprinkler. Right now, for the second rule, it says that if you do not have a sprinkler, you should have rain. So then it eliminates the cases where we do not have a sprinkler and we do not have rain, which are actually the same ones that were eliminated by the first rule. And this is indeed the case because those rules are equi equivalent in classical logic. Now, the third rule deletes the models where we have rain, but we do not have wet. So this is one where we have rain and not wet. Here we, in this one, there's red, sorry, rain, but there's wet. And uh, here there's rain, but not wet. So let's erase. And we have now to check the last rule just, and it's the only one that we have left. And this eliminates the model where we have a sprinkler and not wet. And this is one of it. We have a sprinkler and not wet. And the others, are, the others have sprinkler and wet on this side. And this has, doesn't have a sprinkler, so it's fine. So then we know these are the three models of this logic program P. We could have also used the other method for this that we used in the exercise one, where we more or less go reasoning by case, do some reasoning by cases and, and some deductions there. So we could start saying, okay, let's suppose that there's a model. So um, what can we deduce at this point? Nothing, but let's say that if there's a model, it will either have not rain or it will have rain. So if, if it has not rain, then for being a model, a model that doesn't have rain should have a sprinkler. And it, if, if it has a sprinkler, it should have also wet. So then we would end up here with this with not red, sorry, not rain, wet, and a sprinkler. And this we can check that is indeed a model of the program. And on the other hand, if we have rain, then for a, if a model has rain, it should also have wet. And mm, let me see. And okay, then if a model has rain and wet, then this rule is satisfied. This rule is satisfied because wet occurs there. This rule is also uh, satisfied because rain that is the head occurs in the set red and rain and wet. And this rule is also satisfied because the, the body is not satisfied, right? So actually what this tells us is that these two options, so no matter, um, in a way, no matter the value of a sprinkler, uh, we will have a model, right? So we can check down that these two are also models of the program and what, and these three that we have found using these methods are the same three that we had, that we found before with the previous method. Right, so let me erase this, because we don't need it now. And uh, let's go back to, to here. And now that we know that these are uh, the models of the program, we know that the stable models must be 
um, some of these or none of these, but it cannot be any of the other interpretations. So then let's apply the definition of a stable model. So we write here the three options. Then I think um, let's do this instead of writing here the p p of x because this will be too 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 big. I will use the the program. I will be building the the redact there above. So let me move this then a bit again so that things fit in the screen. Okay, and let me erase then this part here. Okay, sorry for this. Let's go. So for the set SW, when we build the redact, so for th for the first rule that doesn't have, let me write here so that we know where we are, SW, so rain does not belong to the set, so this disappears from the redact. And here for the second rule, a sprinkler belongs to the set, so then this rule disappears from the relay. And then the consequences of, so here we have built this program there above, and the consequences of this relay then are sprinkler and wet. So this means that we have found a stable model. Now, oops. Now, for the set with R and W, in the first rule, the rain, for the first rule, rain actually belongs to the set, so then this disappears from the redact. And then in the second case, a sprinkler, in the second rule, a sprinkler does not belong to the set, so it the literal disappears from the program. So we have here, the redact of P with respect to this set X that we are um, uh, using now. And then the, the consequences of this redact are rain and wet. So then we obtain rain and wet, and this equals what we had started, this X. So then we know this is a stable one. Now we have to check whether this S or W is Indeed, uh, is a stable model of the program. So let's build the redact. Given that for the first rule, given that rain belongs to the set, we delete the rule. And similarly for the second. So now in the redact, we are only left with these two rules, who, and the consequences of this product, of this program, sorry, is the empty set. So then we can say that SRW is not a stable model of the program because the set is not equal to the consequences of the redact of the problem, program with respect to it. Then we know that these two are the stable models of the program, and we can write it here. Stable models, SW and RW. Now, what we have done is first we found the models, and then we check which of those are stable using the standard definition of a stable model. And then we had to check this interpretation, this model that indeed was not stable. But something that we could have done is to be a bit more clever. And in the moment that we found that it was a model, already realized that in this model, there was no way to prove the atoms sprinkler and rain. Because for sprinkler and, and rain, both these rules would disappear from the reader, so there would be no way to prove a sprinkler and rain. So we could say, yeah, SW, SRW is a, is a model, but it's not stable because just by looking at the rules where they appear in the head, we know that they, these rules will vanish in the redact, and hence there will be no way to prove that the sprinkler and rain uh, to prove a splinker and rain in that state, in that stable model. And this is one property that we have seen before. 
here that each atom in the set in a stable model is justified by a proof from the reader. So then here we could already see that this S and rain cannot be justified from a proof of the redact because in the redact the only rules that could justify them disappear. Okay, so this was it for this exercise. Let's move to the next one.